Knock, knock. Today, adult animated series like Invincible and Castlevania have set the bar higher for any TV series that wants to compete with them. But before any of these adult series, there was Todd McFarlane's Spawn, the animated series. Todd McFarlane's Spawn, released in 1997, one of the first animated series to be made for adults. It was definitely a risky move, but it was worth it, because this series just increased Spawn's popularity. The Spawn comics is one of the best-selling independent comics ever created. It was the success of Spawn that allowed the creation of Image Comics, where the creators had more independence to tell mature and dark stories without worrying about the editors. That's why in today's video, we will dive into Todd McFarlane's Spawn and talk about its story, why the show is cancelled, and why you should watch it if you haven't yet. But before we get started with the video, we have a small request for you. If you like our content, subscribe to us and like the video. It might just be a simple click for you, but it means a lot to us. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get started. From comic to animation, Todd McFarlane's Spawn. Todd McFarlane's Spawn animated series made its television debut on 16th May 1997. It featured the protagonist Al Simmons, a government assassin, being killed by one of his friends. So he makes a deal with a devil from hell named Malabolgia and returns to Earth to visit his wife. But we know any deal with the devil never goes right, and Spawn was resurrected five years after his death with a face that was barely recognizable. Al's wife has already moved on and is now married to Terry, who was once Al's best friend. During that time, animated cartoons were mainly for kids, and no one made adult cartoons that featured blood, sex, gory scenes, and a lot of swearing. But HBO took the risk and started airing Spawn on one of their exclusive channels at midnight, and quickly this series became the talk of the town, especially among young adults who loved the series' dark and gory themes. The green-eyed, red cape-wearing anti-hero was loved by all, and this was all the brilliance of the creative minds behind the series. The opening theme of the series was Posed by none other than Shirley Walker, who had previously worked on the opening theme of Batman the Animated Series. That's why you'll find the opening theme of this series similar to the Batman series, but even more darker and spookier. Apart from Shirley, a lot of other creative minds from Batman the Animated Series, like Frank Parr and Eric Ramdowski, became part of Todd McFarlane's Spawn. Alan McElroy came on board as the writer for the series after his successful run as the writer of the critically acclaimed show 21 Jump Street. Alan was responsible for turning the series into a coherent storyline that spanned across a season. Every episode of the series featured an intro from Spawn's creator, Todd McFarlane, who can be seen drawing a panel for the Spawn comic. These live-action intros were directed by Douglas Lehman, who would later go on to direct cult classics like Mr. and Mrs. Smith and The Bourne Identity. In the live-action intros, McFarlane would talk about the different themes we are about to witness in the episode, and in the end, he'd ask the viewers to switch off the lights to watch the series. And to be honest, if you try to watch the Spawn series with lights on, you'd be unable to make out anything except for Al Simmons' green eyes and red cape. The show's color theme was created so that it can be best enjoyed by switching off the lights after everyone goes to sleep. Although the show's first season had an inconsistent animation, the storyline and plot written by Alan made up for the faulty animation. But things went wayward from the second season itself. Alan left the writer's role for the series, and McFarlane had to bring in Rebecca Bradford and John Leakley, who didn't do a really great job for the series. The saving grace of the second season was its animation and visuals, which were done by Matt House Studios. Fans expected that the third season would be the best from a storyline and animation perspective, but Madhouse didn't return to animate the third season. The third season became the weakest season of Todd McFarlane's Spawn. This was evident because HBO was on the verge of discontinuing its entire animation division. Yes, the show was great, the toy sales were doing fine, and Spawn was at the peak of its popularity thanks to the live-action Spawn movie. But Todd McFarlane's Spawn animated series was discontinued because HBO wanted to go all-in on their live-action shows and didn't want to focus on animated shows anymore. Although HBO didn't want to continue with animation at the time, Todd McFarlane didn't want the show to be discontinued and promised the audience a fourth season of the show. But his plans never came to fruition, and we were left with only three seasons and 18 episodes of one of the best adult animated series ever made. I can't remember anything. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Exploring the episodes of Todd McFarlane's Spawn. The first episode of the season of Todd McFarlane's Spawn premiered on May 16, 1997. The episode starts with two reporters meeting an informant in a dark alleyway, but some thugs arrive and kill the informant and one of the reporters. The second reporter tries to run but is shot in the leg. The thugs ask him how many people know about this, and the man said no one else knows except for them. So they prepare to burn the reporter alive, but Spawn arrives on the site and brutally murders the thugs for causing a ruckus in his alleyways. Later, the reporter 
reporter finds a gun and shoots at Spawn, thinking that he is also evil. But the spark from the bullet burns his body and he dies at the very moment. The burning body of the reporter reminds Spawn of something, but he has trouble remembering who he is or what he is. But suddenly he remembers Wanda, his wife, and the love of his life, and decides to meet her. When he visits Wanda, he finds that she's already married to Terry Fitzgerald, who used to be his best friend. They also have a small daughter named Cyan. Al Simmons struggles to accept this truth, and the violator who had been tailing him arrives to reveal that he is dead. Al Simmons died five years ago, and because he was an assassin for the government, he was sent to hell. Spawn doesn't believe this, so the violator asked him to visit his own grave. That night, Spawn digs up his own grave and finds his own decomposed body. He's unable to believe that he's really dead, but soon his body gets possessed by an evil entity. The entity reveals that when in hell, Al Simmons made a deal with the devil, Malabolgia, to return to Earth to see Wanda for one last time. So Malabolgia sent him back to Earth as the Hell Spawn. Spawn leaves his body in the casket and takes his wedding ring with him. Later, we're introduced to Tony Twist, and the thugs Spawn killed in the initial moments of the episode turn out to be his men. Tony was agitated that someone took down his men and asked Jason Wynn on the call to take care of it. In the next episode, we're introduced to Billy Kincaid, the infamous ice cream man who's a pedophile and kills his victims by luring them inside his ice cream truck. Meanwhile, in the alleyways, Spawn slowly starts developing his friendship with the alley bums. But it isn't long before Tony's men arrive in the alleyway and ask for the person who took down their brothers. So Spawn appears and kills all the thugs except for one, who tells them to warn Tony to stay away from these alleyways. This frustrates Tony, so he decides to take things into his own hands. He meets a cyborg assassin named Overtkill and assigns him to take care of the person who took out his minions. Meanwhile, Jason Wynn meets Senator Scott McMillan and asks him to run for the presidency election. McMillan was unwilling to do that, so Wynn threatened to stop covering the tracks of his serial killer child murderer son. Yes, Billy Kincaid is revealed to be the illegitimate son of McMillan. Upon being threatened, McMillan reluctantly agrees to run for the presidency elections, but Wynn has already made plans for him to win. Meanwhile, in the alleyways, the Violator meets Spawn and assigns him a mission, but Spawn denies it as he's caught up with some personal stuff. So the Violator reveals his form as the resident of Hell and the servant of Malabolgia. He reveals that Al Simmons is beneath him and should prepare to serve his master Malabolgia. Al Simmons is truly disturbed by this incident and wonders if he's really dead or alive and what the hell is happening to him. Around the same time, Cogliostro, who was once a Hellspawn, comes to Al Simmons and tells him that he's on the front lines of a war between heaven and hell. He also reveals that Al Simmons has some qualities that made him the target to become the Hellspawn, but he still has a choice between good and evil. After saying this, Cogliostro leaves Al Simmons alone to think about his choices and prepare for the upcoming battle. Later, Overtkill comes to the alleyways to search for the person who took down Tony's men. He interrogates one of the alley bums and rips off his hand to send a message to Al Simmons. When Al reads the message, he's suddenly attacked by Overtkill, who calls Al Simmons spineless. Due to his nature and ability to use multiple weapons as a cyborg, Overtkill manages to give a tough battle to Spawn, but Spawn manages to overpower him and injure the cyborg's eye. This makes Overtkill scream in pain, and he attacks Spawn with missiles from his hands. Thinking he has killed Spawn, Overtkill leaves the alleyway, but Spawn is still undead. Later, Spawn decides to infiltrate the facility that stored the firearms that he used when he was alive. He manages to steal a bunch of weapons and gears up to fight Overtkill again. When Overtkill was getting himself fixed, he was ambushed by Spawn, who was now equipped with his weapons. Later, Spawn meets Tony Twist and reveals that he brutally murdered the cyborg he sent after him. And if Tony doesn't stop disturbing him and the people of the alleyway, then he's going to do far worse things to him. After giving Tony a stern warning, the Spawn leaves and Tony screams at his sheer failure. Meanwhile, Wanda Blake, who was an attorney, took on the case of a mentally challenged person named Kyle Watson. Kyle was charged with brutally murdering small kids after sexually harassing them. But Wanda believes Kyle was set up, so she helps to release the guy. Later in the episode, we're also introduced to Chapel, who was Al Simmons' subordinate, but later betrayed and killed Al upon the orders of Jason Wynn. Even after releasing Kyle Watson from custody, Wanda was still not satisfied. She was still snooping around to catch the real culprit of the child murderers. So she assigns a private investigator named Max Givala to bring her the undeniable proof that will help her catch the real killer. But Max and Wanda's meeting was being photographed by an unknown man. This makes Al Simmons, who has been following Wanda all the time, catch the photographer and ask who hired him to snoop on Wanda. The photographer was so terrified that before he could reveal his employer's name, he shot himself dead. Later, it's revealed that Terry Fitzgerald actually works for Jason Wynn. He reports to Wynn that there has been some discrepancy regarding the weapon supply, but the one behind the discrepancy was actually Wynn. So Wynn asked Terry to research more about the matter and asked him not to talk about this with anyone else. After Terry leaves, Wynn reveals that Overkill had a camera attached to his eyes.
Lopez, which might have the recording of who killed him and who might be responsible for stealing the firearms. When Wynn watches the footage, he sees the spawn for the first time, unable to recognize that it's the same man they used to know as Al Simmons. Later, Max brings even more proof that proves that Kyle was not the child killer and someone was covering the real killer's tracks. Wanda thanked Max, but Max asked her not to do anything reckless with this because he suspected big names were attached to this case. Wanda says she won't rest until she catches the real child killer. The next episode starts with a maniac preacher who goes on a killing rampage while kidnapping a mute boy. He has somehow found grenades which he was using to take down the police officers. The officers have started considering this preacher might be a child killer and all of this was happening in the alleyways of Spawn. Meanwhile, in Wynn's office, Terry visits him again and reveals that after he reported the missing shipments, there have been no other discrepancies. He also reveals that his research to find who was behind the missing shipments didn't lead anywhere. So Terry submits his report and Wynn asks him to leave. Wynn then assigns Chapel to find the person who stole his firearms and destroyed the cyborg. But at the same time, Wynn receives a call from Senator McMillan and the Senator reveals that Wanda is still snooping around the Kyle Watson situation. McMillan was afraid that something might turn up and Wanda might find out about Billy Kincaid, which would not only put Billy in prison but also reduce his chances in the presidential elections. Wynn asks the senator to calm down and tells him he'll take care of things, so he asks Chapel to take care of Wanda's informant and kidnap Cyan, the daughter of Wanda and Terry, and bring her to Tony Twist's lair. Meanwhile, the Violator meets Billy Kincaid and tells him he's a big fan of his work. Violator asks Billy to meet him somewhere tonight because he has something for him. Later, Max Givala, who had been supplying Wanda with the case files, was mysteriously murdered inside his office. When Wanda hears the news over a call, she's devastated by it, but at the same time, Cyan is also kidnapped. Meanwhile, the police corner the grenade-carrying preacher and try to take him down by shooting him, but as it turns out, the preacher is still not dead and unpins two of his grenades. The mute child was in the way and might have been caught in the explosion, but Spawn intervenes in time and takes the kid to safety. Later, Spawn hears about Cyan's kidnapping over the police radio and goes to save the girl, but in a surprising turn of events, the murderous preacher turns out to be the violator. Meanwhile, Cyan was locked in one of Tony Twist's safe houses, which was ambushed by Billy Kincaid. This means the violator was the one that tipped off Billy about Cyan's location. Meanwhile, Spawn was doing his own research to find Cyan. He catches one of Tony's workers and asks him if he knows where Cyan is. The worker reveals that she's in Tony's lair. Thus, Al Simmons rushes to Tony's lair to find Cyan. At Tony's lair, Billy Kincaid has already escaped the premises with Cyan, and one of Tony's men informs Tony about the incident. This makes Wynn visit Senator McMillan and ask him if he's the one who ordered Billy to kidnap Cyan. But McMillan said that he doesn't know anything about this development. This makes Wynn suspect some other unknown forces are at play here. Meanwhile, Spawn catches up with Tony Twist and demands to know where Cyan is, but Tony tells the truth that someone else took the kid. In Billy's lair, he was preparing to kill Cyan, but Spawn ambushed him. A frightened Billy accidentally sets the house on fire. Watching the house on fire gives Spawn severe PTSD because he was also killed by fire when he was alive. Meanwhile, the police also learn about Billy Kincaid and try to find him. Billy takes the opportunity and tries to run away in his ice cream truck with Cyan. But before Billy could escape, Al Simmons manages to get a hold of the truck. Later, Billy drives to the same alleyway that was home to Spawn and crashes his ice cream truck there. He takes Cyan and makes a run for it. Al Simmons catches the child killer and asks him to leave the girl. But Billy puts his knife on Cyan's throat. This makes Spawn use his powers to save Cyan and catch Billy in his cape. All of this is being watched by the Violator, who fills Al's head with thoughts to kill Billy. But Al doesn't kill Billy and takes Cyan with him. The Violator comes to an injured Billy's aid and shoots the boy in the head, killing him. Meanwhile, Al Simmons asks Cyan to leave and meet her parents by giving the kid the wedding ring he stole from his grave. Cyan comes out of the alleyway unharmed, and Wanda is delighted to meet her daughter. When Wanda sees the wedding ring inside Cyan's palm, she asks her who gave it to her, and Cyan reveals the sad man who saved her. The first season ends with Cogliostro narrating that this is just the beginning and the Holy War is just around the corner. Later, the story of the animated series spans the second and third season. Although the second season was not one of the strongest seasons from the storyline perspective, the visuals for the second season were one of the best of that time. Later in the third season, Al Simmons discovers that his cape has shape-shifting powers, which he uses to transform himself into Terry and make love with Wanda. This sets off the events of a prophecy that would lead to Armageddon and the Holy War. The show ended with a cliffhanger, indicating a potential fourth season which never came to fruition. Him. Him. No! 
The main characters in this show. The show primarily revolves around Al Simmons, who is voiced by the legendary Keith David. His portrayal of the character Spawn still remains one of the most remembered and loved portrayals of the character, even after 20 years. Al Simmons was a government assassin, who was betrayed by his colleague and went to hell. In hell, he made a deal with the devil, Malabolgia, to return to Earth to meet his wife again. So Malabolgia turned him into the hell spawn and sent him five years ahead in the future, where Al's wife had already moved on and is now married to Terry, Al's best friend. Wanda, who was voiced by Dominique Jennings, was the reason Al came back from the dead. Wanda was an attorney in the show, and it was her actions that carried the narrative of the first season of the show. Later, her story was fleshed out more in the second and third seasons. The primary antagonists of the first season were Tony Twist, Jason Wynn, The Violator, and Billy Kincaid. Tony Twist, voiced by James Keen, was introduced in the first season as a worthy mafia, but was later turned into only a petty criminal after Spawn took down his men in overt kill. Using the name Tony Twist in the first season also cost Todd a lot, because the hockey player with the same name filed a case against the show for misusing his name. That was one of the primary reasons that Tony Twist's character was not included in the live-action Spawn movie. Jason Wynn was the driving force, or the main antagonist of the Spawn animated series. Jason Wynn, voiced by John Rafter Lee, was the director of the United States Security Group. He was the one who ordered the assassination of Al Simmons after Al started asking questions about his missions. He can also be considered the reincarnation of Genghis Khan, as he was the primary force that set off most of the events of the series, and even led Al Simmons to becoming Spawn. One of the recurring villains of the animated series was the Violator, and the clown-like entity from Hell was voiced by Michael Nicolosi. The Violator was sent to Earth with Al Simmons as his guardian by Malabolgia. Since the Violator viewed the people of Earth as beneath him, he never missed an opportunity to torment Spawn. In the first season itself, he set off the events that led to the kidnapping of Cyan by Billy Kincaid. Billy Kincaid, the most hated villain of all time, was voiced by Ronnie Rocks. While nothing much is known about why he became a pedophile or a child killer, it's assumed that he became like this because he was neglected by his father ever since childhood. After his initial introduction, Billy soon becomes the most hated criminal in the history of animated series because of his heinous crimes and psychopathic tendencies. Who am I? Why should anyone watch this show? The year 1997 can best be termed as the year of Spawn. In May 1997, Spawn the Animated Series started airing and soon found a cult following, even among people who had never been introduced to the Spawn comics. Later that year, the Spawn live-action movie came to theaters, and Spawn became a household name, increasing the viewership for the next seasons of Spawn the Animated Series. While the live-action movie was good, it didn't do an excellent job of diving into the specifics and the backstories of supporting characters, but Todd McFarlane and Spawn, the animated series, outclassed the live-action adaptation in every way possible. This show was one of the very first few TV shows to be created for an adult audience, but it was still watched by teenagers because, you know, when you prevent the kids from watching something, they would be drawn towards it more and more. The series featured a lot of full frontal nudity, a lot of blood, verbal abuse, and some of the most heinous crimes like child abuse and murders. The animated series was also true to the essence of the original comic, holding on to the gritty and dark nature that was uncommon for animated series back then. Although adult animated series have become more popular today, and showrunners are not afraid of a TVMA rating, making an adult animated series back in 1997 was actually a risky move. HBO did take a risk animating the Spawn series, but it paid off tenfold because the series soon became a cult classic. Even if you watch it today, it will still give you the same viewing experience as most of today's shows, so one can say that this show was way ahead of its time. And it was unfortunate that the show ended with only three seasons. There was nothing wrong with the series. The story was perfect, and even better stories were going to be animated, but HBO stopped its entire animation production, and thus, the series came to an abrupt stop. So if you love watching dark and mature series like The Invincible and The Boys, then you'll definitely love Todd McFarlane's Spawn, the animated series. Why are you following her? Marvelous Verdict Although Todd McFarlane's Spawn animated series came to an abrupt end, the comic series is still loved by fans, and there has been a lot of buzz that a Spawn movie reboot is happening, starring Jamie Foxx as the anti-hero. Some sources claim that Jason Bloom is producing the movie, and that the movie will star more A-list actors apart from Jamie Foxx. However, since there haven't been many reports about the development of the movie or cast members, it can be assumed that the movie will not meet its 2025 release date, and probably the production house taking more time might be a good thing 
thing for the fans of the Spawn series, because they'll have time to craft a better story and have better VFX. This means the movie will not turn out to be a disaster like its 1997 counterpart. But as of right now, nothing is for sure. So take this news with a grain of salt. Apart from the live-action movie, we really hope Amazon Prime picks up Spawn and gives us a product similar to or even better than Invincible. With that being said, if you like our content, like it and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!